I want to have a sandwich named after me. I want to go. <laughs> yes, I do. I want to go into some shop somewhere and go, I'll have the Elliot. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. <laughs> and inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And you are definitely going to want to stick around today. This this is actually quite possibly one of my favorite episodes. Really? We've done. Yeah, just the energy of it just felt really good. Well, Elliot, good. Elliot tells a story about a friend of his who's a coach, and we get into something that has to do with goals, but that has to do with grins. Yes, it does. How, how grins affect goals. So very quickly before we jump into that, if you are liking this podcast, please tell a friend, share it put it somewhere where other people will see it. I just spent a week at Podcast Movement and I have a lot of ideas of things we're going to be doing. Which scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, but the thing that most landed for me was how much I enjoy getting to have the conversations that yeah. I'm getting to have with people that I otherwise would not have the opportunity to. And so I want more of that. Me too. And oh, oh, oh and our oh, birthday. What? Yes. Our birthday. Our Technically, okay, we are recording <laughs> this week. This will come out next Tuesday, which I think will be like the third or fourth, something like the third. Third. So our birthday, Elliot and I share a birthday September 1st. Yes. So maybe this week we'll go do something for our birthday since we totally messed up doing the <laughs> podcast thing you're going to do did. for our birthday. But we will, yes, we will do something for our birthday. All right, let's hop into the story. Okay. So... Here's my story. And as with some other episodes, it's not really my story. Yeah, maybe, we, maybe we just now don't even have to say that. Here's just, the story. Here's a story. Here's, here's a story. <laughs> Go for it. One of my friends used to be a uh, coach in another life. And he was talking about how he started to the transformation of his thinking in terms of working with clients with goals, because everybody has goals and what's your big vision, what's your big hairy goal and different, different expressions of what that should be. Mm -hmm. um, and he decided that the goal didn't mean anything unless it really made you happy, which seems kind of cliche, but I like the way he phrased it because he started putting on these uh, workshops, uh, looking for big grin goals. That's what he called them. And, big and the, grin goals? Big grin goals. I, I'm like instantly grinning for some reason. Yes. <laughs> big grin goals, you know, something that makes you happy. But uh, that wasn't the thing that really got me. I what feel really, so different, but, 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 but not to interrupt your story, but I'm gonna. Yeah. Um, there's a big, there's a huge difference between big grin goals and goals that make you happy. The, the, the happy one, for some reason, whatever reason, I was like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. but big grin goals, I instantly grin. And I could like physically feel it. Yeah. And yeah. that, that really was his point. It wasn't just, well, what would you like to do? Yeah. But what would make you ecstatic? I mean, it's it's really it's a big particular kind thing. of ecstatic. Yes. Like grin is is very, very niche specific. It is. But what he what really got me, and the reason why I wanted to bring this up today is because he started deciding that the measuring tool for his client was what he called a grindicator. <laughs> <laughs> and I love oh my God, I the love essence that. of the grindicator. The grindicator. And so he told he told this <laughs> example. He was working with a, a group of people and he said, well, what's your, they, he set it up, he explained what a big grin goal was and the grindicator and all this other stuff. And he got to this one and he was going around this group and, and they had to come with their goal. What would make them really happy? Just put a big grin, put a big grin on their face. And this one woman stood up when it was her turn and she said, I want to get a divorce. <laughs> But wait for it. No, that's not oh, even the best, the best part. part. There's a better part. She goes, I want to get a divorce. My husband doesn't have any idea what hit him out of the blue. But here's the big grin goal. I want to get a divorce in such a way that everybody involved, including my husband, views it as a celebration. Everybody oh, is ecstatic I love that. by this. Yeah, by just um, by like like kindly acknowledging the truth of a thing or, you know, like yes. there, there are ways. It's funny. I just had a conversation with this about this yesterday with someone, that, that specific thing. Um, but we, I don't want to take that offline. But, but. It, but no, I think it's it was really interesting. So what they had to do and, and there was laughter in the room about that. It's like, yeah, this doesn't happen. You know, it's like the music breakup. It never happens. You know, somebody's actually, always upset. But it did. And yeah. she, he said that we worked together. We, once we said, okay, 
we got over any skepticism. We said, okay, if that's your big grin goal, that's it. And they meticulously planned. And he said, and it ended. They celebrated the divorce with this huge party. The husband had bought, or now the ex that, you know, had bought in. Everybody was happy. It was just a, a big thing. And everybody had something to celebrate in terms of this transition as opposed to one leaving the other behind. And there's right. this, this yeah. thing. And it just struck me as a great example and an unexpected example of how you can think about not just a goal, but something that's a big grin goal. Well, here, because because here's the interesting thing about that. I think, I, I suspect, I have no idea, but I suspect if you had framed it in any other way, like something that would make you happy or, or some big goal, it feels kind of gross to say like, oh, my big audacious goal is to get divorced. Like it, it right, just, there's, right. I don't know if something falls out of alignment with it because there's and not to get all silly nuanced about the word grin, but there is such a distinction between like grin is very different from smile. Mm -hmm, it's it very is. different from something that lights you up, which I hear people say all the time, yes. something that gives you energy. Like there's a lot of coaching language that orbits what he has like centered mm -hmm. in on, but it lacks the energetic vibe that a grin does because there's something about a grin. Even as I say it, <laughs> I like get all grin. Grins make your eyes light up too, because grin has a, like this layer of delight to it and, yeah. and like, and almost, and, and a layer of hope for something that's more than just possible. And I think delight is the right word. I mean, I may say it would make me really happy to get my executive MBA. Sure. Or whatever. But I wouldn't I grin. Know. Yep. No. Over it. That's not the same thing. Right. Right. You know? No, it, it is. And I'm, I'm thinking through like those distinctions. I'm, like 20 of them are hitting my brain of like things that light you up. I have always had this issue with goal setting. Um, and I think you and I are very similar this way. There have been a number of years I set like revenue goals for my business. Mm -hmm. And I would promptly, frankly, just forget about them. Like they just, they, they did not light a spark in me. I can set a number on a piece of paper. I can even think like, Ooh, what would I be able to do if I had that number? Mm -hmm. It still just doesn't inspire me to do anything differently, to track anything differently. I just, it doesn't light a fire in me. And if you hit that goal, you may feel satisfied. You I may guess. feel proud of yourself, you I may, don't know. but it's not a grin thing. No, so, no, it's yeah. not. However, there was a one year where I really wanted to, there were a few things that I wanted to be able to, and when I, I noticed that when I put it in terms of the thing, like, oh, my family could go do this thing, or then I'd be able to do this. Like then I actually get a little bit more motivated by it. Yeah. But finding that thing that gives you the grins, it reminds me of some language I used to use years ago was, was like when something is so compelling that it has like a magnetic quality, yeah. then it's not about setting some goal and then doing the hard work to get there. It's when it has that magnetic quality, it's like pulling you towards it. So the hard work feels more worth it. And more so, I mean, a tiny bit reminds me of that discipline quote, like discipline is remembering what you want. It's like when you, mm. when you are, when you are okay. energetically tied to a thing that you want, especially with that like delightful grin kind of thing, the hard work just takes on a totally different flavor, shifts it from something like you have to do or need to do or should do into like, this is an effort that I am willing to do because I want this other thing so badly. Yeah. I mean, the, the transformation, I always, think about it um, as transforming from what I have to do to what I get to do, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. so I've been thinking ever since my conversation with, and the, the guy whose story it is, his name is Scott Wintrip, and he's a, just a great uh, HR consultant. And he doesn't do the executive coaching. He wrote a book called High Velocity Hiring. He's really good. But ever since my conversation with him, I've been thinking, well, what, what are the big grin goals? Because it puts it in a different category. It's not just, as you said, hit a new revenue mark for 2020 right. or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, not for me, but open up a second office or yeah. something. And, and what qualifies? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, you've, you've really got me in my head, like thinking about that distinction, because here's the funny thing I'm noticing. Everything I can think of for myself that feels like a big grin goal comes with a certain amount of, that's why I'm not blathering out like 10 of them, like a tiny bit of almost, I don't know if it's vulnerability or sometimes it's almost like, like shame is far too big of a word, but like, it'd be like, oh, I can't say that. I want like that. That sounds yeah, like really, yeah. that sounds really egotistical mm -hmm. or that sounds really fill in the blank with something that's a little bit like, 
<laughs> that, that you want that thing. But that really does take you to a different kind of excitement and motivation and lots of things, actually. It, it can now. So one of my goals, and I, I've been trying to figure out, is this the right category? So one of my things is I want to do more public speaking. I love public speaking. But that's not the big rigging goal. For no. me, what comes closer is I want to do a, a great TEDx. Mm. But in the right forum mm -hmm. that, you know, because there are TEDx's all over, but I want to give a topic that I'm really passionate about at a TEDx that, that gets exposure. I think that's cool. Now, on the other side, the non-professional goal, I want to have a sandwich named after me. I want to go. <laughs> yes, I do. I want to go into some shop somewhere and go. I'll have the Elliot. And I don't want it to be like sauerkraut and hard boiled eggs, something I'd never eat. I want it to be something that I really it's like. like. Uniquely you. But here's so here's here's my curiosity. I suspect because like the TEDx thing, I totally get that. That's a big goal. But I don't even I'm not even so sure that that is exactly the big yeah, grin goal. I, I think yeah. I think that that the sandwich and the thing that's underneath of having the TED talk are actually the same thing. And oh. that is the grin. I think there's something about and, and this is why I can talk about it for you. But I like I was saying, like, these are the things I feel a little bit yeah. vulnerable to name my things. I think there's there's something about being known for a thing like mm -hmm. being being acknowledged acknowledged or seen or known or recognized. Yeah. There's a there's that vibe about it. But you don't want it just any old way. I mean, a sandwich is a very but specific here's, way. Here's, but a here's, TED is a specific But way. here's the difference. Okay. Hmm. So in that past, in those past, whatever it was, 90 seconds, I gave you two things. I talked about the TEDx and it's like, yeah, I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. But it was only with the sandwich that the, we started, that we lit up. Energy we started came laughing. Right. Like, yeah, I want a sandwich. There's a sandwich. <laughs> and, and that's why like metaphorically, I think even with the TED talk, you want a sandwich. I do. Like I metaphorically, it's like having a sandwich named after you, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Right? right. And not a crap sandwich either. <laughs> a good sandwich. <laughs> no, but that is the thing. And so just like, honestly, this is one of the times I really wish we were videotaping and not because because I'm making some weird hand gesture that needs to be seen. <laughs> but because if you could have watched the energy of the space, like you were talking about the TED Talk and I was listening and my brain was following along, but I didn't feel it. You started yeah. talking about the sandwich and all of a sudden circuits are like, zzz, 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 zzz. like <laughs> exactly. you lit up, I lit up. There's all this energy behind it. And it's hard to deny that if you put that much energy behind a thing, it has to be easier to get to that thing than if it's like, I want to lose 20 pounds. Right. Like <laughs> Right, but see the okay, but see the thing with the sandwich though is <laughs> that that when you're talking about a big green goal, sometimes see, I mean this seriously, sometimes there's also not a direct sure. line to it. Absolutely. Because with the TED talk, I you know, I can go online as I have and I found a lot of different TEDXs and I can apply and I can do my submission because you have to fill out this the form. And there's a there's a process. Mm -hmm. But I think that maybe it's endemic to it. Maybe it's just a couple examples, like with the divorce thing or the sandwich thing. Maybe there's not a direct line. It seems almost a little outlandish. Right. Well, and actually, I would I would go so far as to say if there was a direct line, like in theory, you could leave the building right now. You could go to some restaurant. You could say, hey, I'd like you to pitch. I'd like to pitch you having an Elliott sandwich. I, you know, I don't want it to have eggs or sauerkraut. Right. I want it to do this. <laughs> and you could probably get a sandwich. I don't think that would scratch your itch. No, no. It, right. it would, See, absolutely would not. It, no. Absolutely. So it's not about the sandwich. It's not about the TED Talk. It's about another thing. The, the sandwich is, is evocative of the grin energy. The TED Talk less so. But they are both pointing to something that you undeniably want more of. Yeah. Fair? No, that's absolutely right. fair. I yes. think it's the power of metaphor um, because the sandwich truly is – a metaphor, right? I mean, it's not about the sandwich. And th there's a there's a values exercise that I learned years ago that I just I, it reminds me a lot of that. Where you know, if you work with a person or a company or a group of people to identify their values and what they like, mm -hmm. it's I, I don't dispute that that's a highly value valuable exercise. Yeah, sure. I dispute what comes out of it quite often as being valuable because if you know, we've talked about this a million times, if what you come out with is, you know, integrity and excellence. Yes, quality and, is just, and, yes, and yeah. even but but even but here's my beef. So that that is a that is a definite. But I would act I would also say though that even if you come up with more meaningful words, they aren't necessarily evocative of what you want them to be. Because and not that this would come up as a value for a company, but certainly with a person Take a word like freedom. Freedom 
freedom for some people means means flexibility. For other people, it actually means like financial independence. And for other people, it means financial stability, which is different than financial independence. Like, right. like th- those are those are like nuances of nuances of nuances, and they're very different things. And so if it's just in your own brain, maybe it doesn't have to be so defined. But if you are in any situation where you want other people to kind of embrace the thing, the only way I've ever seen that happen is through metaphor. So this, this exercise was you take a bunch of words and you get a lot of words that you like. First, you glom them together into to strings. So it's like freedom slash flexibility slash, hmm, you know, okay. whatever. So th- th- they're together. Whereas you also might have freedom slash financial independence. Like it can go in two places, but those become these like buckets or themes of a thing. Mm -hmm. And then for the one or two or three things that you really want to be specific, and it gets back to this grin thing, this grin energy anyway, you, you come up with a metaphor for it. And so the the one time I did, one time I did this with a client. Yeah, I was going to ask for an example. Yeah, yeah, because it sounds very, very theoretical. They, they really truly did have this strong value of of diversity, but, mm-hmm. but diversity even means a lot of different it things. Means like a lot of it, different it things, can, yeah. it can mean just literally like we want people of different ages and races and genders and right. whatever. I mean, and that's certainly part of it. Sure. Um, and, and it wasn't that that wasn't part of it for them, but again, almost like with the sandwich, just making sure they had X percentage they the boxes of, like, and they, yeah, 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 there's a version of right. that that feels very checkboxy, like right. going and getting your sandwich named after you. Mm-hmm. It can happen. That's not the box you're trying to check. So we talked and talked and we, and I'll, we'll skip to the end. Like we did all this and they put a bunch of words together and someone said a thing, which I will say in a second. And literally you could just feel it in the space. Like people put their pens down and sort of leaned back. And there was this like, ah, oh, that is what it is. And someone, because what they were narrowing in on is that they value like different kinds of input. And, and, and so someone said, there's always room at the table. And for mm. them, that was it. Like there's always room at the table. Pull up, pull up another chair. Another voice is always more, always going to be more valuable. We're never going to win by keeping a tiny, tight little three people making yeah. every decision. So for them, diversity wasn't just race and gender and age and all those things. It was also diversity in the sense of not just the three people who've been at the company forever, but like the person who just walked in, they probably have something to say or share or yeah, contribute. That, and so for them, that, that it's slightly different than a grin goal, but but no, but it does energize. It, it energizes. It gives yeah. the same gives the same thing because you're right. There's just because you realize, oh, I have an Asian guy in the next office, right. and I have a Hispanic woman. <laughs> and over they were there. actually frustrated because that was not what they were. That's after. not. Yeah, yeah, that's not it. But there's always room at the table has so many implications, not only for the people who can pull up a chair, but also the value to the organization that we're going to hear these people. We're going to mm-hmm. make sure there's room at the table, that there, there's a forum for the, them to contribute, that everybody else recognizes it. Yeah. There's a whole thing that goes along well, with it. And that. it also just shows up in very like logistical, pretty basic logistical ways. Like anytime they sort of catch themselves in the um, like, oh, we're trying to decide a thing and then figure out how to share that message in a way that people will understand – they lean back on this. There's always room at the table. Let's let's do it as a conversation. Let's let's open it up before we're completely done with this decision, so that we can hear from people because this is something we value. And yes, sometimes it makes it messier because people have opinions that we weren't we were hoping we wouldn't have to factor in. But they value it enough, and they know that that is the value that they're going to lean on. That it feels worth it to do that thing. Yeah, and I I find that just like with your example, with if they went with um, one of our core values is diversity, quote mm-hmm. unquote. Wah, it, wah, wah. Yeah, it's <laughs> it it strikes me. There's a um, there's a one of the premier meditation teachers in the country, mindfulness teachers, is Joseph Goldstein. And one of the things that he had said that I think about a lot, but I think about it with corporate slogans and vision statements as well. He says, "The thought of your mother is not your mother." And what that means hmm. to him is that, and what I've been thinking about is, he'll try and differentiate, is this, are you just creating words around what you think is the image, or are you hmm. really getting closer to the essence of oh, what it means? Interesting, yeah. So, a lot of times in my translation, the vision statements that diversity is very important and we value diversity, or quote unquote, that's more the thought of your mother. The mother, the real essence of it is that there's always room at the table. Yes. There's, this yes. is what it makes me feel like. This is what what I draw from it. And you know what? And so to take it back to your example, that's how the two things you said 
felt to me. So when you were talking about the TED Talk, yes. and, and I'm not disputing that that is a solid goal of yours. No, I think it's, it's a great right. way to get to what you're and after. And I'd like to do it and all that stuff. But yeah. it feels like it is on the path to the energetic feeling of having a sandwich named after. I mean, look, yeah. I, I, I like light. I started <laughs> I was laughing saying it. Um, and I get those weird kind of like laugh tear things in your eyes kind of because there, there's an emotional evocativeness to that that is that is just undeniable. And so I, I love thinking of, I would love, I, I wish I could pause and have people call in and talk like the goals, the things that you like set your sights on right now, like how, where do they fall in the Grindicator? <laughs> yeah, where do they fall in the Grindicator? So one of the things, and we've obviously spoken a lot about my public speaking class, and I like doing the public speaking class mm -hmm. at, at Towson. I like the presentations and all that stuff. But when there's a letter written by a parent of a kid that goes to the department saying what that person can do now because they have this confidence, whatever, that thought is what makes me really grin when I, mm -hmm. when I think about this one person. Teaching the course is fun. Right. No, no, I, no, I totally get it. I've seen yeah. this energetic shift in you. Like, I know you like teaching the course, but it doesn't make you grin or light up when you get like the same way as like when you get an email from a student or like, this is how this matters. And I don't even yeah. mean the emails like, gosh, you're amazing. That was so no, great. No, 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 right. no, it's when you've had an impact. Yes. It's the impact and the specific, I ran for student government. And I had to stand. And I wouldn't and I have done do, that. And I wouldn't otherwise. have done that. That's the grin. Because it's kind of like having a sandwich named after <laughs> it's you. It's kind of like having a sandwich <laughs> named after you. I love that. So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. <laughs> that is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at S H M S podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best of ways. Lovingly snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing... Just a little bit of everything. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. <laughs> Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story.